Good morning to all. Next topic in module 6 is measurement of force. Force can be measured using various methods. But as per our syllabus, we need to study the measurement of force by strain gauge load cells, hydraulic and pneumatic load cells, three component force measurement, measurement using piezoelectric Korsky's cell. In general, the force measurement is classified into two basic categories. One is direct and two it is indirect. Generally, the mechanic weighing systems such as balance, both analytical balance and platform balance, then multiple lever system, pendulum force measuring mechanisms are coming under direct method. On the other hand, the elastic transducers such as strain gauge, load cells, probing ring, hydraulic and pneumatic systems, piezoelectric type load cells are coming under the indirect method. Starting with elastic members or elastic transducers. The principle of elastic transducer is explained with the help of this picture. So it contains an elastic member onto which a strain cage is bounded. So when a load or force is applied on the elastic member, it results into a dimensional change of the elastic member. The dimensional change of this elastic member changes the resistance of this strain cage. And the change in resistance of the strain gauge varies the potential difference or a voltage variation and it is sensed with an instrument and that signal or the instrument is calibrated to read the corresponding force. Under the elastic transducer, the two most common instruments used for force measurements are one is load cell and the other one is probing ring. Both employ strain gauge. The picture shows a simple load cell which contains four strain gauges R1, R2, R3, and R4. And on this R1 and R4 are fixed along the axis of the elastic member. This is the elastic member. This one is the elastic member. And R2 and R3 are fixed perpendicular to the axis of the elastic member. So R1 and R4 are measuring the longitudinal strain that is along the axis of the elastic member and R2 and R3 are measuring the strain in this direction that is transverse direction. So these R1, R2, R3 and R4 are connected in a V-Stones bridge and the potential difference is taking between the points B and point D and at when the elastic member is uh, at initial stage if it is not loaded the potential meter will shows a voltage equal to zero when it is loaded like this this is compressive load is acting we are act giving a compressive load then based on this load the resistance values of r1 r2 r3 and r4 are changing and this change is reflected as a voltage output so we will have an output voltage so this output voltage is calibrated to show the corresponding force probing ring is another device used for measurement of force so this is a ring made of steel and having rectangular cross section and on that we have got four 
strain gauges R1, R2, R3 and R4. So in the figure we can see that the ring is subjected to a tensile force. This is the applied force, force is tensile. So because of this tensile force, this R1 and R3 are subjected to tensile loading whereas R2 and R4 are subjected to compressive loading. So R1 and R3 is giving the tensile force loading and R2 and R4 are giving, showing the compressive loading. And uh, these four are again connected with a V-stone switch as explained earlier and the changing voltage is will be corresponding to the applied force. So this voltage is calibrated to give the force. Next is hydraulic load cell. So these hydraulic load cells are generally used for measuring high forces that is up to 25 mega newton. So it consists of a piston and this piston is resting over a diaphragm and below that diaphragm there is a narrow chamber which is filled with oil and this oil chamber is connected with a pressure gauge generally a bowden tube pressure gauge through a narrow passage so in working we are applying load on the piston so the piston is moving downwards it tends to move the piston downwards which actually compresses the oil or pressurize the oil because it's a hydraulic oil hydraulic oils are generally incompressible theoretically incompressible at certain level so it actually pressurizes the fluid and that fluid pressure is transmitted to the pressure gauge since the rising pressure in the pressure gauge or the fluid is uh, corresponding to the applied load so we can calibrate the pressure gauge to uh, read directly the load in pneumatic load cell instead of a hydraulic fluid air is used so this one is actually applicable to a lesser measuring lesser loads but with a, a high resolution so uh, the construction is like that it has got a diaphragm and over the diaphragm there is a load plate and on the load plate we are fixing a needle so needle is pointing towards a bleed wall so before be, below the diaphragm we have got a chamber that is an airtight chamber you can tell that and on one side we are having a inlet port which is uh, through which a constant pressure air is supplied and on the opposite side again we have got a port and uh, that port is connected to a pressure measuring element a pressure measuring device so when the force is applied on the diaphragm then it will tends to move the bleed wall in downward direction so that actually reduces the area of bleed wall if the area of the bleed wall is getting reduced the pressure inside the chamber is increased because the air from the constant pressure supply is actually moving towards moving out of this chamber through two ports that is the port opposite to this one that is towards the pressure gauge and another one is through the bleed wall if we are closing the bleed wall or reducing the area of the bleed wall what will happen more pressure of air will be flowed to the pressure measuring element that means it will show a higher pressure so this pressure is again depends on the force applied so we can calibrate the pressure uh, shown by this pressure measuring element in terms of applied force 
axis is so electric force at the so in this we are making use of piezoelectric material so a piezoelectric material is nothing but when it is subjected to a load for a pressure it will generate a small amount of electricity so here we are using a quartz element here like this and at the middle of the quartz element we have got a charge collection plate so the produced charge is collected by this plate and here a preload stud is there over the stud we will screw a impact cap and on the impact cap we are applying the force so when we are applying the force on this preloaded stud so this piezoelectric material is getting pressurized so it will produce some a small amount of charge so that small amount of charge is not enough to have a enough to measure so we are using an amplifier generally this amplifier is known as charge amplifier so this amplified output is used for measuring the otherwise that amplified output voltage is calibrated to give the force the interesting things to note on piezoelectric force sensor is that they are active devices because they are there no power supply is needed and the deformation is generating a signal from the piezoelectric material so the generate signal is a very small which has advantage of high frequency response so these kind of instruments are used for high frequency responses up to 100 kilohertz and uh, this high frequency response is make use this materials suitable for dynamic measurements for example uh, these are used for extremely fast events such as shock waves in solids or impact printer or punch press forces can be measured because of this high frequency response characteristic and finally we are going to study about the use of this piezoelectric transducers for measuring multi-component Force. So, as an example, we are considering a three component force measuring setup. So, in this, we are using three layers of piezoelectric materials, and these are cut along in a direction of the force to be measured. So, you can see that the x component of the force is measured using the top layer of the piezoelectric material so it's you can see the direction of cut of that piezoelectric materials similarly the y component is measured using this bottom piece and it has got a cut direction perpendicular to the x direction and in between we have got another layer of piezoelectric material and that is measuring the Z component and we can see that all cuts all our cuts are in vertical direction and each disc has electrodes inserted into each and that is collecting the charge produced by the corresponding this and we can notice in this figure that a force in a planted direction is applied through all the same force is applied through all the discs and the each disc is actually meant for capturing 